The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to the Ephesians, stated that all those who would be adopted as the children of Christ, that is, those who would become the members of his kingdom, were also chosen before the foundation of the world. In fact, every man and woman that enters this world has a set time and number of days appointed by God in pre-mortality. Job asked the question whether man has an appointed time to come to earth. The question, of course, was rhetorical, but he answered it later nonetheless. The Lord informed Joseph Smith in Liberty Jail that the number of the days and years of his life were already known and set. They could not be numbered less or, for that matter, numbered more. Every spirit who has come or will come to this earth has been chosen to come at a specific time and for a specific duration. This implies that specific locations were also part of the plan. Not only were spirits given their earthly assignments, the sun, moon, and planets were also organized in their times, revolutions, laws, and bounds. No doubt there were other important details to work out and events to sequence within the larger plan. However, these are quite sufficient to substantiate the necessity of relegating their memory to the subconscious. Every person knew not only his past, but his future and mortality almost in its entirety. To know one's future is quite problematic from a behavioral standpoint. Man has always wondered if he controls his own destiny. In other words, does he truly have free will? Or is man merely a pawn of destiny or fate? Can he only act as circumstances or God require without the ability to act independently? And what effect, if any, does a man's knowledge of his own future have upon his behavior? Shakespeare's Macbeth is a good illustration of the conundrum. As Macbeth and Banquo travel to Fores, they are met by three witches. The three weird sisters greet Macbeth with three titles, Thane of Gloms and of Cawdor and King to Be. This troubled Macbeth, since at the moment he was only the Thane of Gloms. The witches greet Banquo as well with future tidings. The question is, what should Macbeth and Banquo make of the prophetic greetings, and what, if anything, should they do? Shakespeare posed these very questions through the mouth of Macbeth. Macbeth realized that if the prophecies were true, then he didn't need to do anything. He could simply bide his time. 
Yet at the same time, Macbeth contemplates taking action to bring this happy ending into fruition, the murder of Duncan the king. Banquo, sensing the dark implications of the prophecies, warns Macbeth against his course of action. We know how this all ends up. Macbeth, at the urging of his wife, does take action to ensure the course of events. He kills Duncan and becomes king. Banquo, on the other hand, does nothing, and the prophecy upon him and his posterity is still fulfilled. The fundamental questions, however, are, would Macbeth still have become king without taking action? And did knowing the future compel or at least influence Macbeth's decision to take action? That is, would Macbeth have killed the king without first hearing the prophecy? <laughs>